Hello, welcome to Momentum. I'm your host, Robert Green. We're happy to have you join us today. Uh, today in the studio, we have Mr. Zach Graham with us. Zach is a 2001 graduate of our computer engineering program and has recently retired as an engineer from NVIDIA. So Zach, welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. So tell me, what possessed you to come to Mississippi State University to get your computer engineering degree? Well, I was born in Tupelo, lived in Tremont, Mississippi for the first few years of my life, and uh, we eventually moved to the Nashville area. But uh, once I graduated high school, I decided I want to get away from home for college, find a good engineering program, but also still be close to family. And most of our family still lives in the Northeast Mississippi area. So I thought it was a good mix of uh, far yet close, plus a great engineering program, and I was fortunate enough to get a nice scholarship as well. So all that combined to uh, lead me to Mississippi State. Okay, well, we're glad you, you came here. Uh, I understand your, your father had a fairly significant role to play in your decision to pursue computer engineering. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, he did not go to college himself, but around the time I was born, he started sort of self-teaching himself, programming, working his way up, through the ranks at the, the company he was at. And I remember when I was four or five years old, we had a Commodore 64. He would start teaching me basic programming, even then. And through the years, as, as I was growing older, he would often show me tips and tricks, programming, games. Uh, he just really, ha I had all my feet uh, in the water of computer programming from a very young age, and it's all thanks to him. I don't know what kind of exposure I would have had otherwise. And it just fostered a love of computers, gaming, electronics that has existed my entire life. And I knew early on I wanted to do something with computers. And I settled on computer engineering because I thought that would uh, allow me the biggest range of possibilities as I exited college. Well, he, he clearly had a, a huge impact on you. Mm -hmm. and. You're recognizing that by endowing the uh, Rick Graham Peer Tutoring Program in the Computer Engineering Department. Um, why did you choose to, to honor your father with the uh, peer tutoring? About a year ago, I started thinking, what kinds of ways could I make the biggest impact on Mississippi State if you know, I'm fortunate enough to give something back? And in speaking with the MSU Foundation and Dr. Khan, I realized that their, their pilot peer mentoring program was really making a huge difference in retention and uh, letting students have a bigger stake in what they're trying to do with the rest of their lives, uh, have it be more personal. And I thought to myself, yeah, that's, that's really what it was between my father and I, just a personal relationship, talking about computers, just generating that, that love of computer engineering and electronics. And when it was time to uh, create this peer mentoring program, I thought, you know, what better way could I honor him and his legacy than to name that after him? Yeah. But it's more than just peer mentoring, isn't it? it, it I mean, we, we hear peer mentoring and we think of, oh, well, I'm just going to talk to you and you know help boost your self-confidence or maybe help you study for for a class, but there's there's more to this program than than that. Is there something you'd like to, to share with us? Sort of what you maybe what you expect to get out of this program. What what difference you really hope it to make? Right. Uh, yeah, I remember my first year at Mississippi State, and the coursework, of course, was more difficult than high school. But in addition to that, you had to learn how to sort of be an adult for the first time, living on your own, and it was really my most difficult semester that very first semester. So. If I think back to my early electronics classes, I would have uh, TAs helping me out in labs, uh, things like that. And uh, I had some fine TAs, but I never felt that sort of personal connection that you know, they were also really invested in what I was doing, especially spread out among so many other students. Uh, this peer mentoring program, though, it really allows for not only the, the freshmen trying to learn sort of a new skill, but also the upperclassmen helping them out to solidify their knowledge and help them uh, as they're getting close to graduation and uh, deciding what they want to do with their careers. Their careers. Yeah. I happened to, to go over the other day just to look around some of the labs and, and see what they were doing. And 
we had a class coming out there actually working, freshman class working on their design projects mm -hmm. uh, and some of their tutors there, they're telling us about their projects. So, so I think it's a really great program. How, how much help did you really get? As you mentioned TAs and all, did, mm -hmm. did you think you uh, needed more help, uh, more assistance, you and your classmates back in 2001? Uh, there is always room for help in, the, in these sorts of projects when you're learning something totally new. Um, and yeah, certainly help was offered by the TAs and it, it was great. Um, thinking back to my days though, it, was, it wasn't as much of a group effort in these projects as I'm seeing now. And that sort of collaboration uh, is important, not only in school, but once you get out into the uh, business world, that's really all it is, is collaboration. And if you can foster that starting from the very beginning in college, especially led by people who you might even better relate to as fellow students, that can, I think, really give you a leg up on not only your project at the time, but your entire uh, schooling experience. Well, we certainly appreciate the, the generous gift you, you've made and in memory of your father. I know it will make a big difference in the department. Uh, you know, in the Bagley College, we're not only concerned about students being successful academically while they're in school, but also being successful as professionals. Uh, so I'm glad to hear you talk about the importance of collaboration, because uh, that's certainly been a focus of what we've been trying to do with our senior design, our freshman design, and just other programs, is to get students to work more closely together. Um, so people may not have caught it when we first started, but you've recently retired from NVIDIA, and you just graduated in 2001. That's right. So you've clearly been very successful in a very short time. Um, what were some of the keys to, to your success? And, and maybe even tell us, what did you do at NVIDIA? What, what exactly was your job there? Uh, official title at NVIDIA was uh, ASIC Design Engineer. Um, I spent most of my career, though, sort of on the back end of things right before we would send chips for production, working on timing, power, uh, essentially making th the design as efficient as it could be. And uh, that really fueled my love of problem solving. Uh, toward the end, it's much like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. And that's something I've always loved doing. So combining that with computers is, was really my dream job. Okay, well, what skills do you think served you best um, working as, in industry? Uh, certainly, being able to collaborate and communicate with uh, coworkers, that's one of, if not the most important thing. Uh, but there also has to be some sort of dedication to what you're doing. Uh, for projects as big as what I was working on, you can't really phone things in. Uh, when you're assigned a piece of the chip to work on, everyone's depending on what you do. and. You have to have the de dedication, the focus, uh, some late nights on occasion to really see things through. And that's often how it was in school. Yeah. So the all-nighters that you pull in school aren't for nothing. You may be doing something similar in the, in the working world when you graduate. Yeah. So I know a lot of students will come in with the idea, well, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, this is exactly the job I want to do. But I think we all get out and we realize, well, the job we do is the job that needs to be done. Right. Um, how did you enjoy the work you did? I mean, were, did you, were you really working on things you absolutely loved or were those things, well, this is what the boss says we need, this is what the company needs, so this is where I'm putting my effort? Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've always loved is computer gaming. And what I worked at on NVIDIA was always gaming chips. Um, so at a high level, that's exactly what I wanted to be doing. Um, from a lower level, though, you're really just working on a computer chip. When in the moment, you're, you're not actually playing any games. Uh, but I knew what the finished product would be. I always look forward to that. It was uh, a little discouraging that whatever I worked on, I would never actually see on a shelf for another two years. But as products came out that I worked on, I was very proud of the contributions I made. And the pipeline was always full. I would always see new things coming out. And I was proud to say, and I still am, that, hey, I worked on this or that. Yeah. And I, I couldn't have been happier with the contributions I've made over the years. Yeah. 
Do you get a kick out of using the products you helped design and build? Yeah, absolutely. I, I drove in something on the way here that NVIDIA had a hand in, and therefore I, I suppose I did as well. Okay. Um, what do you think made, what, how, how were you really successful in, in college? For some of our current students or prospective students, what were some of the things you did that um, made you successful in school and able to, to get through and, and go on to a fruitful career? One thing I would say is don't be afraid to ask for help or speak up. It seems like that is one of the most difficult things for people is to say that they're having an issue with something, whether it be schoolwork or anything else. Um, especially if maybe you did really well in high school and you're finally you're seeing something challenging and you're afraid, hey, this is going to be embarrassing if I, if I speak up. But, I would encourage everyone to always ask for help if you need it and uh, work with others as best you can. And I think the peer mentoring program you're, you're endowing will, will certainly help with that. Much easier for a student to go to another student for help rather than maybe being afraid to go to, to a professor. Yeah, exactly. I, I thought that seeing someone leading the class that you can really relate to will make it so much easier to ask for help. Yeah. So now that you're retired, I know you're still figuring out what you're going to do. Um, right. But what sort of hobbies do you have? You know, what do you like to do sort of, what do you like to do outside of work before you retired? Uh, I can say that most of my time is definitely going to be taken up by uh, my two small children, uh, Jordan and Sophie, five and three. Okay. So uh, that's a full-time job. Yes. <laughs> but aside from that, uh, I, I still tinker with uh, computers and electronics, um, going to a lot more sporting events now. Uh, including MSU games. Okay. Um, and uh, trying to get back into some of the hobbies that I put aside mostly for the past few years, golf, tennis, basketball. Uh, but the, really the possibilities are endless. Um, I may find other ventures soon I, may, I might want to explore. Uh, perhaps go back into the working world at some point. But right now I'm, I'm enjoying time with uh, my wife and children and uh, seeing where life takes us. Yeah, um, it certainly sounds like a lot of fun and I'm sure you're gonna do your best to be the inspiration to your children um, that your father was to you. So, yeah, I can only hope so. Yeah, well once again, thank you for, for the generous gift to uh, electrical and computer engineering for this peer mentoring program and for taking the time to, to join us today. And I wanna thank you for taking the time to join us on Momentum and we'll look forward to seeing you on our next episode.